Hi there, welcome to Music Notes. I'm Christy Fletcher, and today we're gonna to be talking about a hymn tune that is a favorite for many. Um, remember last week we were talking about Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, and we found out that the hymn tune was written by George J. Webb, and he came to America from England in 1830, and he became friends with another composer Martin Lowell, who we found out a few weeks ago was the composer of the tune Hamburg, which is what we like to sing with When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And I explained that it was their contemporary, another friend, William Bradbury, that paired Webb's music with the words um, George Duffield's lyrics for Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, paired those two, and that's how we got the hymn tune that we sing today, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. So at the time, I told you that Bradbury composed the hymn tune, Jesus Loves Me, and I know I promised that we would get to that song, and I really, uh, we really will, but I wanted to do this song, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Um, and guess what I just found out? So William Bradbury composed the hymn tune that we sing when we sing on um, LSB, that's from our hymnal here, and here it is on page 576. It is, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, and the hymn tune composed by Bradbury is The Solid Rock. All right, so let's take a listen right now to that. is Bradbury's tune and we sing my hope is built on nothing less on page 576 with that tune now Bradbury he moved to Boston um, and when he did he was actually born in York Maine and his father was the leader of the church choir and he had a brother Edward Bradbury soon though they moved to Boston and it was in Boston that Bradbury met Lowell Mason, and by 1834, he was a known organist in the area, and he began teaching in Brooklyn, New York, and then in 1847, he went to Germany where he studied harmony, composition, vocal and instrumental music with some of the best masters of the time. Then in 1854, he came back and he started the Bradbury Piano Company in New York City with his brother, Edward. And then Bradbury is a well-known composer and publisher of a series of musical collections for choirs and for schools. And he has compiled over 59 books that go back starting in 1841. Um, the tune that he wrote here uh, it's considered to be a foot stomping tune. Um, we don't do that at church, but I do like to imagine back in the day that, um, you know, this was a passionate hymn and almost had a gospel feel to it. We find out that Bradbury is also known for um, being a gospel composer. And this appeared with Mote's text in 1863, and it appeared during the American Civil War in Bradbury's devotional hymn and tune bit book in 1864. So um, that's enough about Bradbury right now. I promise we'll get to Jesus Loves Me in a bit. Now I'd like for you to listen to this next hymn tune that I'm going to play for you and see if you recognize it.
So that is, oh, looky there. My hope is built on nothing less. And that's what we find on page 575. And if you look at the bottom of that page, the music is by John Stainer and the tune is called Magdalene. So we're gonna spend some time with John Stainer in a few weeks, but for now, I'll just tell you that he was an American composer and organist, and he lived from 1840 to 1901. And this tune is probably titled Magdalene because it possibly comes from when in 1860, John Stainer was the organist at Magdalene College in Oxford. Now, also, if you look at the bottom of page 575, it has a note there, and it says that this hymn, the, the words to this tune, this, the words, the lyrics, can also be sung to the hymn tune Melita, and Melita is what we sing when we sing Eternal Father, Strong to Save. So it's pretty versatile. The lyrics here can be sung to multiple tunes. All right, so now let's talk about the author. His name is Edward Moat, and you see his name here at the bottom of the page as well for text. He was born in London in 1797, and his parents managed a pub or they were innkeepers, and they sort of let Edward run wild, and um, it said that they didn't even have a Bible or want a Bible in their house, and um, they just left him to his own devices, and then speaking of his childhood days, uh, Edward Moat once said, so ignorant was I that I did not know that there was a God. So he was unchurched, did not grow up in a home of faith. He found faith when he heard the preaching of John Hyatt at the Tottenham Court Road Chapel in London when he was 15 years old. And three years later, he became baptized at 18. So he was a trained cabinet maker and he worked in London for 37 years. And it was during his life as a cabinet maker that he says this hymn just came into being for him. He says one morning he was um, in 1834, he was just walking to work and it entered into his mind to write a hymn on the gracious experience of a Christian. And by the time he had gotten to work, he already had the chorus figured out. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So he had that firmly in his mind by the time he got to work and he said over the course of that single day, he came up with four more verses and he just kind of put them in his pocket. And the story goes, and I'll read you his words here. He says, on the Sabbath following, that day that he wrote the words, he said, I met Brother King, who informed me that his wife was very ill. And he asked me to call and see her. I had an early tea and called afterwards. He said that it was his usual custom to sing a hymn, read a portion, and engage in prayer before he went to meeting. He looked for his hymn book, but could find it nowhere. So I said, I have some verses in my pocket. If he liked, we would sing them. We did, and his wife enjoyed them so much that after service, he asked me as a favor to leave a copy of them for his wife. I went home and by the fireside composed the last two verses, wrote the whole off and took them to Sister King. As these verses so met the dying woman's case, my attention to them was more arrested and I had a thousand printed for distribution. So it's interesting. Uh, the inspiration there truly just came from his thoughtfulness, 
But then just a few days later, there was the true need to really um, pull the hymn together. And then the last couple of verses, he had something very particular in mind when he thought about his friend's wife who was dying. And so um, that's interesting. And he did that, again, he was kind of an unchurched youth, uh, but he found Christ, but um, he spent 37 years as a cabinet maker, carpentry, um, and in 1852, by the age of 55, he decided to give up carpentry and he wanted to become a pastor. And he went on to pastor the Rehoboth Baptist Church in Horsham, West Sussex, for 26 years. So it was a second career for him. And he was very well liked by his congregation and they offered the church building to him as a gift. Uh, but he replied, I do not want the chapel. I only want the pulpit. And when I cease to preach Christ, then turn me out, out of that. So he resigned in 1873 and in failing health, he said, I think I am going to heaven. Yes, I am nearing port. The truths I have been preaching, I am now living upon, and they'll do very well to die upon. Ah, the precious blood. So he passed away when he was 77. So actually he lived for a very long time considering uh, what we know about a lot of people in that uh, era. He died in 1874 and he is buried in the churchyard at the Rehoboth Church. So this hymn's topic comes from the parable about the security of building your house on rock as opposed to sand. And that comes from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. And it reads, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. The song also uh, possibly as an inspiration, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. It reads, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And finally, in our hymnal, if you look at the bottom of page 575, you can see our hymnal references Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20. And it says, our hope is secure because we are anchored to Christ as our great high priest and through his own body. He has opened a new and living way so that all believers may now approach God without fear. So we talked about how Moat wrote six verses to this song. However, we only have five in our hymnal. And the reasoning for that is as such. Um, the Un United Methodist hymnal editor, Carlton Young, we've mentioned him before, um, he says that the hymn is of uneven quality. He says, indeed, the version in our hymnals today results of careful editing of the original six stanzas into four choosing the most coherent lines from the original. And it's believed that the first stanza that we sing is really a melding of what Moat wrote in his original first and second stanza. And that was done to make a more, a single more articulate stanza. So, um, and finally, so that would account for, now we've got five, there's still a sixth stanza that we don't have 
um, in our hymnal, but I'll read it to you today, and maybe this was um, something he wrote with Miss King in mind. It reads, I trust his righteous character, his counsel, promise, and his power, his honor and his names at stake to save me from the burning lake. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So Bradbury's musical setting um, really helps this song and the words come across. This setting is simple, it's repetitious, uh, and according to some, it's foot stomping. So when we're in church next time, I double dog dare you to stomp your foot. Um, but Moke's lyrics have merged to form, you know, between Bradbury's tune and the lyrics, we have a hymn that is uh, inspirational. It has been here now for generations and it's proved very comforting um, to many that are going through their spiritual journey. So I hope you enjoy this arrangement of My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to fill his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, clad in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. 